Hey, 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 there we go. There we are. Welcome, everybody. Classic RoboMasters timer restart on you there. Um, but we're here, and we'll be talking to University of Texas and Virginia Tech today. Some of the big players in RMNA um, in the last couple of years, and two of the teams that are higher up in my prediction list for this year as well. So excited to get, a, get to throw them in the hot seat and, and see how they're doing, Steven. This should be great. I mean, team really last year after their 2022 season uh yeah, remarkable like loss to putter so if you remember that that was a shocker i remember so there's CD2 there's teams. definitely virginia tech definitely has the most interesting like performance lore out of all the schools right like mm. you can you can look there were games last year so last year we gave away prizes for the most interesting game of the day and the University of Texas, we had to like meet as a as a staff and figure out if we could give it to them twice because their games were just unhinged last year. They were having crazy upsets and the games they won or lost, it was super close and nail biters. Um, but they've kind of, you know, they're only like a, a three-year-old team that's kind of been on the up and up the whole time. Virginia Tech has had this like crazy lore where they went to China and they were one of the only NA teams. And then they kind of fell off real hard and there were rumors that like there was internal strife in their team. And then they started like making a comeback um, and and have, have kind of returned everyone's thoughts for top three or top four. Um, so I'm, you know, we're, because it's a college competition, every team is in threat of falling into like a two or three year cycle because you will always have really good talent that graduates and leaves. So I'm interested to see if Virginia Tech, you know, once you've been through now four years, those those issues and woes that they may have had two or three years ago, they might, like, it might just be rumors and lore to them now too, right? There right. might not be on people on that team who are still even in that. Pretty ancient so. history. Well, let's go ahead yeah. and get into it with our first interview, which will be actually Sam, Team Stampede from the University of Texas. Um, let me go ahead and pull them in here. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, your name, uh, your role, and your position on the team. All right, yes, hello, thanks for having me. My name is Sai Sinapathy, and I am a mechanical member on the Stampede Robo Master, and I am the robot lead for the Standard Robot and the Sentry Robot. Awesome, good to have you. Hopefully uh, you can answer a few of these questions. How long have you been on uh, Stampede, by the way? I've been on Stampede for three years now. Um, I just recently graduated, so. Hey, congrats. congratulations. Thank you. So that original putter team, what was that experience like? That that was a crazy experience. Um, being being uh, That being the first time that I was on Stampede and that being our first season was a really big learning experience for us. Um, as y'all probably remember, we only came in with the standards, so we made that coalition team with um, RHIT, RHIT and Purdue. Um, and really the biggest highlight of that competition was just um, building that standard and maintaining it all throughout the competition and being able to compete on the first time um, on the competition grounds. And um, I think that experience itself was just the most valuable thing for us. Awesome. That's great so, to hear. I'm really excited to have you on, especially as the standard team lead. Uh, we've seen in the past, and, and definitely the meta might shift, right? Because of the, the XP and the level changes we've seen in the rules, who knows what this year will look like. But in years past, a level three standard has just ruled the map. Um, and I remember last year when y'all came and scrimmed a and before the competition, uh, it was your first year as like a solo team. And so there were some kinks you were working out, but in your first year as a solo team, you had spin to win and you were working on computer vision. So this year, what kind of goals do you all have for your robots? Are you anticipating what has kind of become the standard for full robot functionality, right? Where you've got well integrated level up systems and you're not worried about dying to overpower, but you also have spin to win, you've got CV, is that something that you're expecting as a team this year? Or are you coming in with what I like to call minimum viable functionality, where you have robots that drive and shoot every round, which is also a very difficult task, right? But kind of what are you guys aiming for this year? Right, so 
I think um, to answer that question, I'm going to talk a little bit about our last season. Our last season, we really came in wanting to do basically everything. Um, we yep. developed an entire fleet of robots extremely quickly. And we tried to do CV and we tried to have all this stuff down. Uh, I mentioned we had spin to win and somewhat reliable robots working. But I think what that culminated in was that we did have a good foundation, but we didn't end up having extremely reliable robots at competition. We looked over a lot of things like proper wire management and um, proper maintainability for the robots just for the sake of getting it done. So I think this year we kind of tempered ourselves a little bit and we decided to just tone it down and look at, okay, can we get these robots to be a little bit more vi uh, uh, reliable in a competition setting? Can we consistently perform, um, even if we maybe don't have CV, can we consistently perform on a level where at least one of our robots is going to be with moving and shooting the way we expect it to every single round? So I think just in summary, our main thing for this season is just get the robots reliable, make them maintainable so that we can mm -hmm. fix and try to learn as much as we can. It's a great Reach. mindset to have. I mean, Reach. you've seen it like over and over. If you can just have just like basic functionality, you can play pretty well in RMA. and a Now, this year, yeah, whether or not that I think, will... I think each year we've seen at least one of the big teams have a robot just absolutely out of commission by the finals. Um, it, it's, it's been a, a repeated theme. And so on stream and in person with the AM team, something that I have, have constantly said, I I have always poked at, well, maybe we should make sure we have that minimum viable like reliability, ease of assembly, ease of repair, like interchangeable parts. Um, that way we have robots that can drive and fire. And especially with I just love it. I, I'm so I'm so excited to see how y'all do this year. Um, because that is exactly my thoughts. Right. Last year when y'all came to our 1v1, I was really impressed that you kind of had functioning CV and you kind of had functioning spin to win as like a second year team and a first year solo team. Super impressive from an engineering standpoint. Right. But I, I did anticipate that it would be kind of the when you try and take a small team and a young team and do everything everywhere, you usually get spread thin enough that, that you break something else. So mm. excited to see kind of how that works out for y'all. And with that type of strategy, it usually puts more pressure on the driving performance. Um, what do y'all have, what, do, what have y'all been doing in this preseason to prepare driving wise? Are y'all doing driver competitions to pick your drivers? How are you selecting your drivers and how are they prepared? Um, so as far as that's concerned we first are trying to get our robots up to scratch before we really do any kind of like um driver training per se okay. uh, i think our current strategy for drivers is get the people that have the experience in driving um and get them to either pass on that knowledge to um other drivers or uh, people that are interested in driving or um, have those people drive again um Later on this month and into June, right before competition, we're planning on having a little bit of that driver-on-driver um, -driver competition between maybe the hero and the standard, so that we have a little bit of time for our drivers to just get acclimated to the controls and get ready to compete. Were you all planning to host another scrim with AM this year? Um, I believe that AM is planning to host a, a scrim at College Station, um, and we're waiting to see where that goes. Awesome. So, because, obviously... There is history between the two universities, UT, a and &M, the rivalry. We poke fun at it in Rebel Masters because we love each other. But I lost Steven. Yeah, so did I. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just jump right back to the drivers until we get Steven back. I, I am glad that y'all are going to be scrimming, and I'm, and I'm glad you've got plans to do standard versus hero. Um, do you have a dedicated team, like at AM, they call them Stratcom, right? Do you have a team that, that focuses on strategy and kind of identifying and choosing team strategy? Or is that just kind of a role that someone in leadership just casually kind of says, hey, this is what we're going to do this year? 
Um, in terms of what we want to do in terms of strategy, that's usually decided by the drivers. Um, okay. Our design is mostly influenced by the... Yep, we can hear you again. Um, our design is mostly influenced by a post-competition design review where we sit down right after competition and we look at what went right and what went wrong. And we as a team are still in that phase of get things working properly before optimizing things. So yeah. the whole strategy aspect of RoboMaster hasn't been as salient and an issue for us. But in terms of driver strategy, okay. usually drive the drivers will have a little bit of a pep talk before um, every match and we'll think about, okay, what do you, based off of what we know about our robots, what do you think we'll be able to do um, in order to give our best performance on the field? Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. I, one thing that, that from the outside right now that um, like Steven, I, I, I just watch a ton of RoboMasters, right? I'm no longer really involved in building robots. Um, sometimes I'll do design reviews and things for, for teams, but I'm, I'm not building bots. I'm not competing. One thing that I've noticed is that a uh, intentional approach to strategy um, can really can really make up for a large difference in robotic capability, right? So I, I'm excited, you know, I mean, case in point, Virginia Tech, right? They, they use that hero strat where they just kind of bum rushed the base and it worked so many freaking times and like teams just weren't watching the matches because it would be another Virginia Tech game and I'd be like, okay, the commentators know what they're going to do. The audience knows what they're going to do, but somehow the opposing team is not watching out for, for a hero backdoor, right? Um, in the last couple of years. And so things like that where um, I, I've really, every time I get a chance to interview a team this year preseason, I say, man, if you can, if you have enough manpower coming with you, if your robots are reliable enough, have it be someone's, like put the stream on a laptop in your pit if you can, or send one human to watch the matches in person. Um, because if you guys can pick a strategy, right? If you know, hey, our robot isn't aiming the best, but it's driving really well or, or whatever, you can kind of build your strategy around um, what, you know, what's working best that year. So. That'll, oh, be, yeah. that'll be interesting. I definitely know what you mean. Um, a lot of this past month has been occupied by uh, me specifically watching a lot of match footage. So I did I did uh, notice the hero uh, the hero base rush from VT. That was it was awesome. That 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 was that was a thing of beauty to watch. Yeah, um, it was great, man. Yeah, no, I definitely agree that it's very important to have members actively observing strategy during the competition. It's a competition you need to be able to adapt and um, recognize patterns that are happening on the field as they happen so you can respond. Um, so again, I think that's going to be a driver uh, responsibility to um, okay. recognize that and react. So a part of that kind of strategy knowledge gathering discussion, we've seen like, you know, Purdue, host the Midwest Conference, right? And they share information with a lot of their uh, teams in that region, such as, you know, Penn State, Wash U, um, even BT goes to the Midwest Conference. Do you think that your team would benefit and say A&M would also benefit from hosting maybe a Texas conference? Um, I've heard through the grapevine that we may have potentially a third or fourth Texas team joining. So is it possible that we could, you know, get the Lone Star Conference. Well, I'd say that I would definitely be for it. Um, that being said, I think that'll be up to a lot of our new leaders since a lot of our um, current administration is graduating. But I think that the alumni on our team would definitely be for having that. Awesome. Let's dive into some of the technical aspects that you might be familiar with on your robot. As the hardware standard team lead, what is, and you, I mean, obviously, right, if you don't want to share, you don't have to. But what is the feature that you're most proud of this year? It could be something as small as cable management. Uh, maybe you guys have really figured out bumpers and covers are going to be so important this year because of the ball velocity. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys have been doing a lot of testing and you've found a really good, like, uh, 3D print material and an infill percentage and a mounting strategy where your robot doesn't just get holes cracked into it. What, what have you, like, what's, what are you really excited to see physically in your robot this year? 
Yeah, so there are actually a lot of things that we changed um, about a robot this year as opposed to our standard last year. Um, we actually posted a picture of a robot this time. So um, there's, there's a lot that's changed. A lot of it is now, we've we moved a lot of, we've moved away from uh, 3D printing a lot. Um, we still use it because it's uh, an available resource we have here at UT to manufacture stuff for free. Um, but we use a lot more uh, aluminum sheet metal manufacturing now. So that helps us with making robots that are slightly more or slightly more modular so we can take them apart and put them back together again much faster than um than what we had in the prior season which will help with maintainability and stuff another thing that we really revisited were the covers our robots last year had some really gnarly covers on them um while while that was mostly an aesthetic choice uh this year we decided to go with something a little bit more practical we decided to have some thumb uh thumb screws covers on basically everything um just so that you can you don't even need to have a driver in order to take them off you need to re stick your hand inside the robot and reach for something you can do that basically in like two seconds and in some places we even have um like latched covers we post a video of this as well um in our cv board we have a latch cover that we can just put the st link into our robot and keep it there and it's completely protected so um maybe not something that's functionally related but it is something that will definitely help a robot stay in the field and work um oh, especially during those like timeouts in between matches if you need to fix something flash some new codes you're bye steven uh yeah, no, exactly what Steven's saying. Look, not to put undue pressure on you, and I know you're already trying to win, but for personal reasons, I really need y'all to do well this year because then I'll get to say I told you so to a bunch of AM alumni. <laughs> you you focused on a lot of things. I was the hardware standard team lead on my team for several years, um, and I love the direction y'all have gone focusing on reliability and repairability. Thumb screws is freaking genius. Um, that way it can be taken apart like crazy fast. Uh, at AM, our original team, we all got, mine is somewhere, um, but we stocked up on the little electric screwdrivers um, where like you push down and it goes. And so we were able to assemble and disassemble our bots pretty quickly, but thumb screws is gonna be just a new level of fast. Um, I'm really excited to, to see how that works for y'all i hope it goes great um that's it and then you you've it's my job to kind of pick apart the things you're saying you've been talking a lot about a hero and a standard and you've said scrimming between a standard and a hero which says to me that you're not preparing two standards uh so you are you are kind of already bought into a, a standard hero meta right right where you're gonna have those those three bots which is which is cool i think it you know it especially for the younger teams it's a it's a nice avenue where you're only building three robots but you still get a little bit more um creativity and innovation because they're they're all different uh so hero robot wise same question but now you have to pick a different answer what's your favorite thing or what are you most excited about the hero robot for usually the hero robots have innovative areas of of ball loading and processing is really tricky. Um, if, if you're not crazy familiar, maybe you haven't watched a competition yet. Maybe you're watching this stream and you're on a team, but you haven't been to comp yet. If your hero accidentally fires two projectiles, you usually die. That's just, that's just how it goes because you're typically below full health and the hero's barrel heat is such that if you accidentally go pum pum, you're, you're toast. And so that can be a really difficult challenge for a lot of teams. Um, those are just some examples giving you time to think. Hero Robot from UT, what are we looking for? What features do you want us to, to be watching out for as it's performing? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a tough one because a lot of the improvements to Hero are along the same lines as the improvements to Standard. We're just helping, we're just um, working on increasing reliability. Last season, our Hero did not actually fire any projectiles, not because um, it wasn't mechanically working, but what, because um, we had a couple of issues with the issues that you just mentioned. So while we're yet to fully resolve or figure out um, how to better implement um, hero's control system 
we that is definitely a focus of ours to make sure that hero doesn't um, kill itself or have problems with um, aiming or anything like that this year. Okay, I love it. I love it. Um, I, you, oh, Stephen, I think we can hear you again. I think you're back. I think, I think I my mic just keeps going out. I don't know why, so you'll just have to bear with me if I cut out again. Just jump right in and continue on without me. Leave me go on without me. Uh, I guess just like last question would just be, let's talk about the, if you're willing to, the century. Um, because last year, your century had one of the biggest hoppers I have. <laughs> is that coming yeah. back so, or <laughs> did we do away with that idea? So funny story. Um, right after competition last year, we decided that we wanted nothing to do with that anymore. <laughs> Um, and we took it apart, threw it in the trash, left it in Seattle. Um, that's gone. Um, this year, we decided that we wanted to put our effort into our standard and our hero, primarily. So our Sentry is probably the one robot that we didn't fully redesign. Um, our new Sentry is going to be very much like our old standard. In fact, it, it is our old standard, um, with a couple modifications to include a CV board to clean up the wiring a little bit. Um, yeah, the Sentry is not going to be like the thing to really look for from our team. But instead of that, what we've decided to do is we've decided to make a new team or a new sub team on our uh, mechanical team that is working on a Sentry 425. So um, this will be something that we're definitely a lot more ambitious about because that season is going to be mostly devoted to, um, to the 25th Century. And a couple of things that we've already done in that direction is making an agitator. Um, as probably uh, 17 millimeter agitators can be equally annoying as a hero agitator just because of how jammable they are and how fine tuned the control has to be when you're feeding those balls in because you can just, it's very easy to overfeed and shoot more projectiles than you want to and lose health to, over, uh, to barrel overheat. We made an agitator this year that we ran for. Uh, I forgot exactly how long we ran it for because this was last semester, but ran it for a good 15 to 30 minutes. It never jammed, so um, this thing also has a fire, a maximum fire rate of 74 uh, balls a second. So <laughs> that's just something to look out for. <laughs> there it is. I was. I'm so glad that that's the end of that statement because I was going to say when you said that designing the standard projectile agitator can be as difficult as the hero. I was like, not really. I was going to I was gonna tell you to keep working. I was like, man, keep going. It's out there. Like, I've seen a couple designs that work really good. I'm glad y'all found one. Um, that's awesome. That's a crazy firing rate. That's one of those fire rates that you could stick into a into an aerial bot if y'all decided to go to China. Because um, oh, yeah. that, that's a place where that becomes really, really important. I that's think great. it's genius that you used your old standard because like we've discussed, it was spin to win and CV hardware already capable. And so that'll allow y'all to just kind of focus on getting some level of minimum. Like I tell every team, if your sentry can just take some random pot shots at things that are the other team's color, right? Then maybe it does enough to make the other team not sure how cautious they should be around your sentry, right? If, right. if they pop around the corner and it just doesn't move at all, okay, now they know it's basically a statue. They'll take it out real quick. And so I, I think that's I think that's a great strategy. I think it's a solid move. It's kind of uh, reminiscent of your roots with RHIT, where they kind of the century was trying to hit that minimum viability level, right? From from uh, from putter. So that's right. great. That's super super exciting. I'm I'm really excited to see y'all compete this year. I think your trajectory has been good. I think you I think you've taken a step back in the correct areas. Um, I'm excited. Hope my biggest uh, nervousness maybe after this conversation is still just man. Those drive, I would encourage you to have tons of people just try driving. Um, I, I I don't know if Stephen has an opinion, but I I don't know that it's that experience because of how RoboMasters is. I'm not sure that experience is something that is um, super crazy important, right? Because your experienced drivers have competed in like one comp and they've played like six matches. Uh, for a total of 20 minutes behind the computer you know what i'm saying like it, it's it. not like uh it's not yeah and it's so like i, I like think that turnover. 
for Say coming in all the time is that turnover rate because you've got new members graduating yeah. and coming into the team so that experience factor you're right it's, it's really only maybe one maybe two years that you're talking about but yeah i mean personally Which is like a total of an hour and a half of drive time right yeah well and this is what we've seen the comp is not when you need to be getting that driver experience you need to be getting that driver experience on your own time with your own team in those internal scrims, uh, scrims with other teams, you can't rely on the competition to give you, you know, a lot of drive. Like you said, Preston, you've only got three, four matches, you know, if you're doing the 1v1, and that's if you have the same driver for both of those. Uh, yep. So, I, I mean, I think, I agree with Preston. I think you are on the right track, and I'm happy to see uh, some progress this year from y'all. Uh, Sai, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at RMNA. Are you coming to RMNA, actually? I forgot to ask. I am coming to RMNA. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys there. Heck yeah. Great. Well, perfect. Right, thank, thank you, you guys for having so me. much. And congratulations again on the graduation, man. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Preston, I am excited to see UT compete. Is that sacrilegious as an A&M alum? It, it sure is not. I've been saying it for years. Um, last year, I got all excited. I kind of got caught up in their own hype, right? Like he said, last year, they tried to, to do all of it. And I was like, oh, man, this is so exciting. I saw their robots kind of function in a scrim before comp and, and got all hyped up. Their matches were pretty good. I'm so excited for this year, Steven. It's going to be great. Well, they're doing the rugged thing. Like they're they're doing the 1999 Jeep Wrangler, where it's like getting... all steel construction, no computers. Yes. We are going to make sure what can work works well, and I'm excited to see that. Well, well, and I think the move to aluminum sheet might be way more impactful, <laughs> no pun intended, than people are thinking with the new projectile speeds. Uh, I've seen a lot of PLA crack and shatter from. The 17 millimeter projectiles. I, I have sadly watched my own robot year. melt from uh, motor heat, and um, I think worries. with yeah, I think with with increased uh, 17 millimeter projectile speeds, that might be another issue with standards. So I think if teams are overly reliant on PLA and they're not scrimming themselves adequately this year, they might have some hilarious just like combat robotics footage where pieces of the robot are flying off during a match. Oh, we might have a real life meltdown, not just a metaphorical one. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and bring in one of our more experienced teams uh, in RMNA, RoboGrinder from Virginia Tech. How are y'all doing? We're excited to go ahead and introduce yourselves, your names and uh, what you do for the team. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot. Hi, Ross. Yeah, so my name is Julian Huang. You can also call me Ray. Yeah, I'm the team lead and the mechanical branch lead for the team. I'm currently a senior student. And yeah, just graduated this semester. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhou Shen. I'm the uh, ECE branch lead on the team. I'm working on the, the robots control code. Yeah, I'm a awesome. junior this year. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you all here. Um, how long have both of you been on Virginia Tech uh, Rebel Grinder? Mm -hmm. Well, five years. It's four, five four, years. Three, hmm. yeah, for wow. for me, three, three years. Like starting my, yeah, uh, starting they're basically my a year. core member in the team. Just yeah. Okay, Evolved so we y'all got some years of experience. Uh, quick question then. How do you stay so committed to Robo Master for that long period of time? Because we've known I've members of different teams that it's like they've just gotten burnt out after one year two years because it is uh do rubble master so what is your secret to staying on the team so <laughs> long and being able to uh, stay committed well uh yeah that's very common and understandable yeah since the team and the, the competition is very intensive and everybody uh, just like catching on your a lot of work yeah senior design every year actually that this is uh probably not suitable for everyone but for us yeah the competition itself very charming and very addictive yeah, for us and also some of our members was the a summer camp students for the role master that seems they're okay. the summer program cool. mm -hmm. yeah, so, so so for me i like so I, I like robotics i think that's the the main reason and and 
I, I think we have a good team and many of the, the members, they are my friends. So I'm willing to devote my, ten, uh, devote my time during like a regular semester to work on the robots. And I'm willing to uh, travel with them to the competition. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Experience. I mean, that, that's great to hear. And we, we've, you know, I like what you said. It's, you do have a good team. So I think it's, it's easy to find satisfaction and enjoyment from your work when you can see it perform level like he, he has for several years um and always been kind of a hallmark of virginia tech is their hero and i'm thinking back to even the first year 2021 they mm -hmm. had probably one of the only functional heroes at that con mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in yeah. 2022 uh they had a uh, y'all did a thing with the 17 millimeter on the side that I didn't yes. really mm -hmm. We lost Steven, but I get where he's going. And so then from into 2023, right, uh, UW has kind of dominated with their standard performance. Their standards are usually unmatched. Um, mm -hmm. Although technically, I think a and beat their standard in the 1v1. We don't need to get into that. Um, but but their standards have always been really impressive. And you all have continued to have the most impressive hero robot. Um, this year, can you clue us in on, um, you can either talk strategy, yeah. like, are y'all again thinking that the hero will kind of lead the team or have y'all kind of kept the hero where it was thinking it's, it's performance is quite satisfactory. And if you focused more on catching your standard up. Yeah. So since last year is the total, the overall performance is, uh, it's kind of good. Yeah. So actually more about re reliability stuff since yep. yeah, every year we have our yeah, top time, uh, yep. last, last year, we just don't have enough you know, chance to solid verify our design so that then yeah, i believe everybody can see on the on the field our robots uh power get cut several single time and just kill and yeah, just ruin the whole game but if we can fix that problem this year completely then yeah this this is all mingle heck yeah that's great hey mm -hmm. like we were talking about with ut i think increased reliability takes you really you know what? I will change my statement. I think increased mm -hmm. reliability in the past years has taken teams really far. Um, something that I've noticed watching, and it sounds like y'all have been there for the whole history of RMNA, right? Four years now um, mm -hmm. of, of North America Rebel Masters competitions. Throughout those years, I've seen the average team performance get higher and higher and higher as we get more and older teams. Mm -hmm. I think this might be the first year where reliability becomes a must, right? Where the teams like VT and AM and UW and uh, where your, your big teams don't have reliability issues. Are y'all preparing any backup robots? Are you bringing two standards and a hero? Are you, are you making any drastic measures? A lot of the Chinese teams will bring an extra engineer, an extra standard. It's so expensive but it allows you a, a certain amount of assurance that no matter what happens in every match, you'll have three robots. Any yeah. plans like that this year? Uh, if we have some, enough money, we definitely will yeah, go for it. But yeah, yeah a budget issue. Yeah, yeah. So, we don't have that much money. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so this year, uh, yeah, our, the, the main of our funding budget is all alloc allocated to the uh, maintenance of our the last year robots. Gotcha. 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 Can y'all hear me again? Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I'm sorry. And then keep going out. Next question, because y'all, y'all have kind of always done your, your own thing, which is great. You were one of the only teams to have supercapacitors that showed up to RMNA and be like, we have supercapacitors. If I remember correctly, mm. are we going to see super caps this year on Virginia tech? I think other teams. Yeah, I think other, other teams they yeah. also have super capacitors. Uh, Purdue, There's a few. Purdue, other but... teams say they have super capacitors. I think A and M probably told you they have super capacitors. They didn't work. And they never mm -hmm. got used. I don't know if they have them this year, but last year they technically built super capacitors and then just they sat on a shelf because the code never got finished. They never got installed on robots. Um, so you're not wrong. Other teams have them. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But your robots are one of the only teams where I've seen them supposedly actually get used. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe also UW. 
but is that a yes? That seems very confident. Like, a, yeah, of course, our robots will have super caps. Yes, yeah. actually, a robot uh, uh, super capacitor is kind of the yes, uh, the special feature for our team. Uh, yeah. As far as I know, when I joined the team, our team is famous for the super capacitor. Yeah. We have our super capacitor in very, very early stage, and uh, our team. Uh, the hardware group, yeah, they also do a very great, great job. And uh, we physically we have our very, yeah, very uh, competitive super capacitor. But you can see in 2022, just something wrong with our code. Then you 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 find yeah our yeah. center is kind of just the chassis stopped spinning, so yeah. that's like a, a, an issue. Mm -hmm. We fixed that for 2023 yeah. Seattle. So yeah, there so you can see it, yeah the. Hero just spinning and just spins yeah. all the time. Yeah. Then we can do our strategy. Well, we yeah. kind of touched on it with the UT interview, but I yeah. think it's definitely something that we want your take on. 2022 match against Putter was mm -hmm. totally unexpected. And I know we you know predicted it's like, oh, is this the downfall of VT? But mm -hmm. then y'all came back, y'all addressed the issues, and y'all got better. What are some of the things that you saw from last year's competition in 2023 that you want to improve upon for this year? Well, this year, well, actually, I think just keep keep the the same standard and uh, actually the key the key that we can solve the driving strategy issue from 2022 to 2023. Just we yeah we watched tons of the. The video they record for for the Chinese yeah, army well. Actually, I think that is kind of uh, the advantage for the teams in arm and a since the army UL in China they they held you know, much more earlier yeah. than than us. Right. Two two months, months I think. Earlier, yeah. Yeah, almost two months. Mm -hmm. Then we can just study the other university. Yeah, yeah, how they find the the, the the sweet point in in the in, the, in their fleet. How to utilize the strategy. I think I believe this this year a lot of teams got yeah, their hero, yeah, very aggressive. They just do do the strike every uh, single time. Then they can just uh, win the win the game. Even they are kind of fall fall behind in the the right, early right. stage of they can, the, they can turn the around the, the mm -hmm. match mm -hmm. by their hero. Yeah, oh, I think that's great, and and I think it. Y'all have found that strategy before, and I hear you saying that it's probably still there. I think it, it's intentional, honestly, right? RoboMasters, I've, when I have to describe it to someone new, I say it's a robotics competition during the school year, and then in the summer, it's an eSport. Like, it's it switches. Because once your robots are built, then it's an eSport. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think when you look at it and you say, okay, if it's an eSports competition, you can kind of look at the game makers the same way I'd look at like Riot or something for League of Legends and say, what do they want the meta to be? And you look at the the hero and the robots, right? And you're like, oh, okay, like this is the hero robot. It's the champion robot. This is, right, your standard is, they're in the names. It's the standard robot, right? It's the infantrymen. It's the it's the Marines in Halo, right? They're just there and they're they're helpful and you use them and they're important. But then mm -hmm. Master Chief has to show up at some point, right? And like lay down the law. So I, I am excited to see y'all's strategy. It's always super fun watching your games. Um, what's something you've talked a little bit about reliability. Is there anything either goofy or fun or super cool about your robots that you want to point out that, that you think um, is super unique? So like last year, a and had a goofy thing where their Sentry had a mohawk on it. Or in the years past, right, like uh, UT's fancy thing was was that they had like crazy amounts of, of like added on uh, 3D printed parts so that their robot looked really finished. CU's weird thing was that they had these low riders with swerve drive, right? So it doesn't have to be super functional. It can be aesthetic. What do you what do you what do you like most when you look at the robots? You're like, oh yeah, that's dope this year. What's super cool? Well, I think probably I will let you down. Since since I will, yeah, I already played the game for five years, and uh, in the the first two or three years, uh, yeah, we, we were looking for yeah some 
uh, fancy design uh, to you. Uh, Thinking of the black and yellow tape, the distinctive black and yellow tape that always was on your robot. It's like you always knew what a VT robot looked like. Another story, since you know, uh, originally uh, I painted it into pink, yeah. but that yeah, violated to, to violate the, yes, the color the code. Rules, so then our team, you know, we just yeah, they, they they keep it overnight. I remember right. going, because that was the first year, 2021, and I remember Ross, oh, back when, yeah, Ross was on VT. He yeah. invited, we were, we were, our pits were right next to each other, and Ross mm -hmm. invited us over, and the first thing we see was this bright pink standard, and we were like, what is that? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's great to hear that uh, y'all are working on, you know, reliability and making sure that leaving leaving nothing like unconsidered because i think we Preston, you said this it's like every year there's at least one instance where one of the top teams forget something or something goes wrong that they didn't think of you know while they were working on the robots the whole semester and it can just destroy them so we're glad to hear that uh y'all are you know hey. trying to check all those boxes i have a question for y'all and I'll ask it in such a way that it doesn't reveal your own strategy, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you've been watching some RMUL Chinese games, uh, mm -hmm. do you think it's better for the team, for a team, to have their century play defensively or to play more dynamically and try to move with the driven robots? Which one do you think is going to be better in the meta this year? Yeah, of course it's more dynamic. Uh, century will be more helpful in the game. Yeah, since for all the origin, uh, regional, regional final, uh, RMUL final in China, yeah, we can find that most, almost I would say, eighty percent. I would say eighty percent of the team they got their century, yeah, fully functional and can do the, uh, do the auto navigation and go and have certain decision tree something. I mean, you can always go uh, defensive when you have like a dynamic sentry. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, the sentry since this year, actually, the same as the last year, if you can drive back to the, the, the repair, the, zone. repair zone, you can get your HP back. Yeah. And, yeah. Until the last mm -hmm. minute, just drive back to the, to the starting position. Mm -hmm. I think you don't know about that, because I believe it was the first, well, the, I think it was maybe the first group stage match, it was between CU and VT yeah. uh, last year, and CU rushed the resupply zone with their sentry quickly got a double kill but then mm -hmm. it couldn't retreat back and so y'all were able to come back into the game by uh defeating their sentry like that so you're absolutely right i mean it, it's not enough to have a you know just a rambo sentry that goes in guns and blazing because it can still get taken down so i think sentry yeah. passing and uh strategy will play a big role this year uh in, mm -hmm. in this year's competition yeah, for Just, sure. Yeah. Last year, yeah, the first game with CU definitely, yeah, yeah surprises us. Yeah, when I drive back, drive to the repair zone and try to purchase ammo and find it, find I got a shot. I was thinking whether I got a shot with our century again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Issue, issue in 2022, but later I saw, oh my, my mama mia, CU's century is right in front of me. Oh, but yeah, at that time I thought we are. We are doomed, but yeah, very yeah, great for for our hero driver. Yeah, he did a really good job. He can he, yeah. He blocked the mm -hmm. the sentry's projectile. Mm -hmm. And he 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 so take so he he down the sentry yeah, yeah. and finally yeah, win the game. Yeah, in the end. Thank you. So you definitely. So I will I will say um, I I hear you and and for a lot of right like it's kind of the goal to have a dynamic sentry that can go and attack and come back and defend. I will say that I'm interested to see in RMNA specifically if the meta is slightly different, because if, um, because in North America I expect a fewer percentage of our centuries to be functional, like really functional, um, and the CV to be really good. I think it might be almost more beneficial for teams that have their century only defend. Partially because it'll it'll help against things like the Virginia Tech hero base race, right? Like if a hero comes to backdoor your base, there will always be a sentry there kind of scanning and looking like in years mm -hmm. past when it's on the rail, um, which, which will deter some of that 
some of that ability of a hero to just chunk through a base shield. And then vice versa, I think for teams that, that have like 80% functional robots, like a CU last year that Steven's talking about, where the sentry can go forward and navigate automatically there and start shooting, but then it can't get back well, then you end up right with an undefended base and a sentry that they, they can they can kill and get XP. And so it'll be interesting to see, there's gotta be in my mind, a, a, a threshold, like a cutoff point where if your sentry mm -hmm. is better than this level, 100%, make it dynamic, it'll, it'll be better in every game. And then I think there's a middle range, kind of where CU was at, where if you have good computer vision, but your self-driving and decision-making code is still questionable, having it play defensively might be more beneficial. Um, and then I think definitely there's like a, you know, the bottom tier where just make things spin around and shoot random projectiles to scare people. And that'll be, you know, a, a couple of maybe the newer teams. But Everyone was scared of that, a random sentry. Well, I have a couple of questions that I want to ask about specifically RMU. Saying that was, oh, Steven, you cut out. Are you back? Again? Am I still here? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So this year, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but y'all are part of the Great Lakes. Is that correct? Yeah, yes and yes, no. And, and, yes, and yes and no. And no. Yes, uh, hmm. yes and no. If you tell, ask, tell us about that. Yeah, if, if you ask us, yeah, three or two months? Yeah, three months, uh, three months yes. ago, yeah, we were. Yeah, yes, solidly, but, yes. Right. But now, and due to the same issue with UW, yeah. Right. UW, yeah, 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 Geo Geopolitical issues. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are not allowed to go back. It's a university mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm yeah, so sorry to hear that. Time. I know, how, we're, how excited were y'all, though? Back yeah, we were. Yeah. I, I I was excited to, mm -hmm. to travel back to to see what the seven versus seven uh, competition looks like, mm -hmm. like in person. Yeah, so I was excited, but 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 since it's, it's the university's decisions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. up for us. And also kind of sorry for our team yeah. member who was working on the yeah, Army UC project. So now that y'all aren't going, mm -hmm. again, feel free to answer or not answer. But what was that mm -hmm. problem? Yeah, going to be dark, dark. the well, dart launcher. Dark, dark launcher. Yeah, is he still working on this project? Like, is this something that y'all are considering? You know, maybe for when RMA grows to the point where you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get our own seven on seven. That like, mm -hmm. you want to be ahead of that <laughs> the curve? That would, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. We're close. I, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna harp on it too much. Hopefully, at some point, uh, maybe. Steven and I will look at the schedule. Maybe we'll do a Preston's Rants episode right before competition or something. We're, we're oh. a lot closer than teams think. Uh, Virginia Tech, y'all probably are, are more clued in, but some of the newer teams, they'll come and and, and they will have a, an excellent time. They'll love it. Uh, but sometimes I hear people being pessimistic about how RMOC maybe doesn't put enough time and investment into the North American community. Yes, we are the small region, right? We're a non-major region of RoboMasters, for sure. For sure, for yeah. sure. But we are growing at a crazy rate. The competitiveness of the teams is going up so fast. 27 um, teams, Preston. 27 teams this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20, yeah. And so so I will, I will say that like two years ago when I asked RMOC uh, that they said that 30 teams was kind of the cutoff where once we had 30 good teams, then mm. we would be considered a real a real full region, like a regular full region of RMUL, where this could be potentially a qualifier for an RMUC competition and opens up a lot of doors, a lot of funding and things. And that was a couple of years ago. I, I don't know if things shifted or changed, but we are about the right size now of a real, of a real regular RMUL region, which is just mind boggling. Shout out to Virginia Tech. Uh, Y'all have been a huge part of that. Uh, you know, those, those early years especially. Um, so it is it is a bummer. I, I know the geopolitical issues are always a concern and a question. And I am I think it's one of the, the reasons that I'm so passionate about RoboMasters North America is it, it gives us options and opportunities 
Now there's two, right? If you are in a country where your schools and your politics and your government are okay with you going to the Chinese competition, do it. If you're in a country where the governments and the schools are cool with you going to a competition in America, do it, right? It's different for every country and every school. And so that's a bummer for RMUC this year for y'all, but I'm so excited to have you guys at RMUL. Thank you for the investment that your team has put into it in the years. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it continues to grow. That's, yeah, my, yeah. that's my mini rant, just in case Steven doesn't hook me up with a Preston's rant episode. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see yeah, about that. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I know speaking like to the struggles with RMUC, it, it's not an easy competition just to, one, get your team ready to go to there. And so all that work and then be told you can't go. I know that's got to be disappointing. So I agree with Preston. That, that sucks. But I'm excited to see y'all at RMUL this year, at least. Um, excited to see what y'all bring to the table um, as far as like, uh, you know, the Sentry being operational, the standard being up to the same, you know, level of skill and uh, ability that the hero was last year. So, I mean, I I won't throw it yet, but I definitely work in this year, maybe even higher. We'll see. Yeah, so I have two questions. And then, uh, and then Steven, if you have a final question. Mm -hmm. Question number one. Uh, are y'all competing in the 1v1 this year? Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So That's 1v1, good. my question is, give me, give me your predictions for the top three teams in 1v1. Top three? Yeah. Well, you, you UW, Camu, uh, UIUC maybe? Yeah, UIUC's got a killer standard usually. That's good. That's good. Okay, oh, okay. Now... So U1 is kind of a different story than 3v3. Our robots uh, is yeah. a, little, a little bit bulky, I would say. We crash the barrier and the war several times and stop the spinning, then get, yeah, suddenly. Get, 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 get so I commented the 1v1 last year, and I remember watching the VT robot was so mm -hmm. aggressive coming out of the gate. Mm -hmm. It would just, President, I don't know if you've watched the 1v1 VODs at all, but it, if you watch any of the VT matches, it just bum rushes the enemy and it just stays on them and lights them up. And the only reason I think that they lost was, like you said, you all maybe like ran into a barrier a couple times or uh, couldn't quite lock onto the robot. But the aggressiveness you received from that 1v1 standard was just crazy. So I'm excited to see it again this year, hopefully. And then my second yeah, sure. question is very similar. But for the 3v3, for the 3v3, let's say Virginia Tech wins, okay? You're the team lead. I'm going to take that off of your shoulders, and I'm just going to say you're team number one, okay? Uh, yeah. I don't ever want to ask a team on, on stream to kind of rate where they think they lie. But if Virginia Tech wins, give me two, three, and four. Who do you think who do you think's up there this year? Two, three, and four. Yeah, you, you, UW. Uh, and... Camu, but fourth. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> since yeah, oh. since, since last year, Singapore definitely a big surprise to everyone. Yeah. But, Huge. Uh, yeah, we believe uh, they, they, their robot is really reliable. Yeah. I, I have to say. Yeah. 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 Hope if if they can keep the same yeah standard as the last year. Uh, the, may, the maybe, may, maybe, or, or Purdue, I would say. Yeah. It's very, very hard to, to It's difficult to predict that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it, it is. Yeah. This this year, I'm so excited because of that fact. I think, I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think even well, third place is getting, is getting very contested. We saw some upset mm -hmm. matches yet last oh, year between I mean, NUS and Texas and CU, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I mean their robots point. got stolen last year, so who knows where they would have ended yeah. up, right? Like, yeah, to your point to about see. that third place competitiveness, I mean, Virginia Tech took Camu to four rounds. I don't think mm -hmm. we had ever, the, the last time we got four rounds was uh, 2021 when it was the finals of ET versus UW. So, I mean, yeah. that well, third place match was neck and neck. 
the yeah. NUS match with Tamu, there was a lot of drama and, and timeouts that lasted forever and all this mess, right? But those were also super close. NUS almost won that series as well. So I I agree with you. I think I think fourth place is, is a really competitive spot. I think third place is a really competitive spot this year. Um, I'm really excited to watch to watch y'all. You you've always I've really always admired um, the focus that y'all have been willing to put into strategizing. I think especially now, now that all the teams, there's, like you're saying, there's five, six, seven teams that have good robots. Um, now a lot more is going to come down to strategy and planning and, and actually like having an idea of what you should be doing and not just what you can be doing. So exactly. super excited. Mm -hmm. Well, thank y'all so much for coming on uh, tonight to uh, do this interview. Um, excited to see y'all. Is there anything specific that y'all are looking forward to in Colorado? Well, I really miss the the roasted stuff fried rice in there, there Denver. was a restaurant. Yeah, there's a yeah, restaurant. There was a restaurant. Like last time when we drove yeah, to like, Seattle, yeah. we stopped at, at Denver. Yes. There was a good restaurant there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you going to share the name of this restaurant or keep it a secret? Yeah, drop it in the chat. Uh, I don't wait, remember. Yeah, wait a second. I see the on the Google okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm... For me, I'm looking forward to see what uh, the, C the CU University campus looks like. Yeah, I, th I think it will be a very beautiful campus. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uncle, so y'all gonna have to put that Uncle in the Henry. chat. Uncle Henry. Perfect. Uncle All right. Henry with the roasted duck fried rice. Heck yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Maybe we'll make that uh, our catering dish for like the final day, big team uh, or big uh, competition dinner. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, thank you guys <laughs> so much for uh, coming on and answering some questions. Uh, super excited to see what y'all bring to RMUL this year. Uh, again, sorry about RMUC, but you know, hopefully we'll uh, see y'all there maybe yeah. in the future or at the actual one uh, in, uh, arm and a 7v7 competition that will maybe eventually happen. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you guys again so much, and uh, we'll see y'all. See y'all in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. See yeah. you. Thank you. Preston, I am so excited. I think we've got, like you said, the, the, that middle ground has become a lot more tier teams. Like, yeah, you've got your, your top tier teams, your, your contenders, your UW, your TAMU, your VT. But that next tier down, you've got, you know, See you who's coming in good. UT who's uh, Steven, maybe... I'm gonna I'm gonna strongly disagree. I think what I'm really? saying yeah. I think what I'm saying this year is specifically that the that, that border well it used to be very wide. It used to be Tamu U dub VT every year. And then everybody else and then the new teams. There were three divisions. Right. I think that top division and the middle division have, have merged. I don't really? think they're the same. But I think I think There's the upper overlap. middle class, if you were, is now mixed. I don't think you can, and and I'm sure we'll have a prediction stream before competition, and, and it'll be the first day of comp. We'll be talking about our predictions, and we'll make a bracket like last year. But I don't think I can confidently say, oh yeah, A and M gets third, or A and M gets second. Um, mm -hmm. I I think there's a possibility that a CU takes them out, or an NUS takes them out. Or like a maybe a more surprising upset would be like a UT, but definitely in the realm, right? If AM is shooting for the moon and is going for, I, I don't know that they are. I haven't talked to their century lead, but if they're trying to do automated driving, and suddenly their century light like just dies level one, gives over a bunch of XP. I I I don't think that it's so clear of a top three anymore. I am proceeding the categories this year. But I think this might be one of the last years, if 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 it's not already, that I mean heck man, UW has been so dominant, it's hard to say that they're not a shoe in for first. Three RMNA titles in a row. I mean that's I agree with you. I mean that that gap between the top teams is definitely closing. Um, I mean, we saw it last year with UW struggling with teams like VT, with Tam, uh, I don't think they ever played Tamu, but teams like VT, CU, NUS, even McMaster, yeah. which I, 
personal per, personal opinion, but I think McMaster is going to be really, really good this year. Um, oh, dude, yeah. Yeah. So, well, so and, I, okay, and... that's my question to you, Preston. Last, I have a question for you. What's your spicy underdog take? Like, who's the team so, that you, you think is going to... You want my gonna... dark horse? You want my dark horse pick? Or you yeah. want my... Okay. No, no, not, not necessarily your dark horse to win it, but just who do you think is going to come in up and just knock the socks off everyone with how good they are? Okay, okay, okay. Here comes a really... I'm going to give you the short short answer first because I need to get better. Short answer. Here it is. Um, CU, which I know you're like, well, we kind of already expect... I, here, here's the long answer. I think last year, we have no idea how they would have done, right? Mm -hmm. They were doing well. They had that issue where the robots got stolen. Tragedy. Um... So they're one of the only teams that's in that upper middle bracket. They're kind of in between here. Right. Where we don't really know how they would have placed last year if they had played all the matches. So I think this might be a year where, I mean, who knows, right? Maybe they contend. Maybe they're up there playing for first or second. Um, the other thing that I'll say is when we're going through the bracket this year, I have learned, man, we've... I have done this now for like six years. So I, for some of, because we have a lot of turnover, if you're watching this and you're like, dude, who is this dude even? So I, I had the opportunity to lead A&M's team and be on their starting, like help found the team and then be on the lead for the, for the standard robot for a number of years. Um, and so I started in like 2019. So this is year five, I guess, of RoboMasters. One of the things that never gets talked about in the preseason is the freaking bracket. RoboMasters, the, the official committee controls the bracket and we have asked and they will not let us modify the bracket. But the way that the bracket works every year is it is possible that team A knocks team B into the loser's bracket. They play all the way to like the semifinals and then Team B has to play Team A again in the semis, not in the finals. Mm -hmm. And that has some crazy potential, man. So what I'm saying is, do I think there are two teams that can beat UW? No. I think UW is going to be fantastic. I don't think there will be two teams that can, that can beat them. But if there's one team that can beat them, and that team beats them into the loser's bracket, obviously they would crush the loser's bracket, and then they try to come back up and they get beat down again. Even if the other team couldn't have beat UW, you could see a situation where, like, CU has to only beat a and for first and not UW. Or, like, a NUS has to beat a, a, a VT or a, or, a, or a CU. Or You get what I'm saying? Well, it's possible. Yeah. There's these crazy scenarios where like a team's kryptonite, like a Virginia Tech, we've already talked at length. They have crazy strats every year. If they have a strategy that says, hey, UW, you have the best CV, who cares? And they just and they just rush with the hero or something. And no other team can get it done, but Virginia Tech can just be the giant killer and kill UW. Well then great, you don't need any other teams to beat them to keep them into third place. Um, and vice versa, right? So I think as we're as you're thinking about what the year might look like, oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I expect every match this year to be an absolute banger. It's um, going to be so good. We're going to have some competitive matches, competitive teams. I wouldn't be surprised to see an upset or two this year. Um, it's going to be great, and I'm, I can't wait for it. We're only now three, four weeks away, I think. So yeah, it's coming up back. soon. It's coming up the last thing that I'll say strategy-wise that I'm really excited for is this new level-up system. The teams that figure it out, it's going to be it's going to be a wild change. Um, uh, we've seen already the uh, Chinese competition, the Chinese regionals have started up, so we've seen you know that those levels play take a role, and I think you know some of those Chinese teams are still trying to figure it out as well. So yeah. it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, like I've been theory crafting and. If, if you are, if your drivers are practiced, 
and they can come out of a fight and be like, oh, I'm 20 XP away from leveling up. Let me just fire 20 projectiles. Boom, leveled up. Now you're going into the next fight with a level advantage. I mean, it's it's a huge it's a huge opportunity for strategy and driver skill expression to play a much larger role in the game. Previously, it was whoever gets their standards to level three first probably wins. And now, I mean, there's just there's there's so much more intricacies to it. Um, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be crazy, and I'm excited to see it. So, Preston, thank you for coming on again to help out with these interviews. I'm glad this time uh, we have working audio for the most part, except for my mic that keeps going out intermittently. But uh, thank you for coming on, and thank you for helping out. Looking forward to seeing you at a uh, RMA 2024. What's one thing we? Uh, I think maybe I asked you this, but uh, I want to know if it changed at all. Is there anything specifically that you're looking forward to in Colorado? I know we've oh, talked like, like outside about of the comp. Yeah, I know we've talked about like the mountain biking, maybe some of the hiking. Um, sure, sure, sure. So the, I mean, as you know, Stephen, there's um, in addition to the volunteers, there's like what's affectionately called the Yee Bros, right? But there's like a section of us that are a, a bit more like a staff as a commentator and producing and working on the AV stuff, we're putting in like 13, 14 hour days, honestly. So I, I'm not planning on doing too much outside of RoboMasters. I love the freaking RoboMasters competition. Um, and I'm so, I think it does excellent things for the engineering programs at those schools, for those engineers. I think it's awesome. I think it's wildly exciting. I think it's, I think it's the best combination of esports and combat robotics that there is. I wholeheartedly um, agree. So like, honestly, I would love to do mountain biking. I would love to go rock climbing. Colorado aligns with most of my hobbies really well. But honestly, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna be wearing RoboMasters shirts every day. And I'm gonna be doing RoboMasters every day. And that's what it's gonna be. But that's that's not to say, oh, like I'm so disappointed. Nope, I'm gonna try that roasted duck fried rice and I'm gonna eat a bunch of cough drops and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna freaking cast robots. You know, what, maybe last day, maybe last day, if we finish on time, maybe a little bit early, who knows, we can go play a round of disc golf. <laughs> That'd be crazy. That'd be fun. If we finish on time or ahead of schedule. Sure. It's all right. That, I'll hold it to that. Event, so we'll see. Exactly. All, all right. right. Preston, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, absolutely. Keep thinking of those theory craps because I definitely we've got a, a theory uh, episode and a robot reveals episodes planned in the near future so would like to maybe thank bring you. you on for one of those but uh That's thank you fun. so much next week i believe we are interviewing three teams well i say we are interviewing we have three interviews uh to do we have uh in us who we actually pre-recorded the interview but unfortunately the audio was slightly corrupted and i've been working really hard to try to get it repaired um and that way we can get it uh shipped off to their university to get approved so that way we can air it but then i believe we are also uh interviewing ucsd and polytechnical di torino which will also be a pre-recorded interview but it'll be awesome to see those uh schools and talk to them um Preston, i know like you've uh talked a lot in the past to, to the torino team and uh so like last year they had a gauntlet of a schedule i think in like their 1v1 group they had to face uh, Nagoya, Colorado, Tamu, and in their 3v3 group, they had to face Colorado, VT, and UIUC. It was it was a yeah. gauntlet of a, a schedule. So I, I'm, I'm excited to talk to them and uh, some of the other teams as well. But uh, thank you again so much, and I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you in Colorado, man. Have a good night. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. We'll see you all next week.